P.O.P. shit Yeah, and if you ain't talking money, you ain't saying shit What it do, what it do, what it do What it do, what it do, what it do What it do, what it do, what it do What it do, what it do, what it do What it do, what it do, what it do Show begin. Ain't seen me yeah. in a while, but now I'm back again. I've been in and out of town, just trying to plug it in. Now you can't never hold me down, bitch. I was born to win. Welcome back to the channel. It's Motormouth813 here, and today I got this beautiful 2017 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack 392 Shaker. Let's get right into it, baby. Starting off in the front of the car, you can see how the aggressive styling grabs your eye as soon as you look at it. You got the RT badge right here and the halo headlights right there. Looking so menacing. I love that look. You also have the front splitter right here that you really have to be careful of when you're driving because it's super low. Now coming out to the top of the hood, you have the shaker hood that I was talking about before. It says 392. It's for the 392 cubic inch Hemi under the hood. Beast, 485 horsepower and 475 pound-feet of torque. Coming down to the wheels, beautiful 20 inch RT wheels. I love the powder coat and gray that they have. We also have big Brembo brakes on the front with slotted race calipers, letting you cool down those things a little bit better than stock brake calipers would. Coming down to the side, aggressive styling, got the Bumblebee emblem there. And it just looks so beautiful coming to the side, so aggressive, I love this car. Coming to the back, like I said, we've got the 20 inch wheels and it's wrapped in 245s all around. And if you ask me, you should get bigger tires because with all this power, it's too much for these small little skinny tires, especially in rainy weather like this. Now you've got the blacked out fuel cap, which I actually love because it really makes that black pop with that gray. And I love this color scheme, period. It's like a destroyer gray. I don't know the exact color of it. Someone comment down below and correct me, but I think it's like a destroyer gray with a nice black stripe coming down and a nice black spoiler in the back. You got the backup camera right here and you got the Dodge emblem and these tail lights are so futuristic. I love the way they look. They've taken the 70s look and brought it back to the future and it looks so much better than the previous generation of Challengers. They were like boxy and I didn't really like them. I didn't really like the way they look. What I really love about this car, you can't ignore it, the exhaust note. Just listen to it, it's such a sweet, deep rumble and when you put your foot into it, it really gets nasty. Right now I'm gonna rev it up a little bit, let you hear that exhaust. Now follow me into the inside of the car so I can show you all the nice little functions and little features that this car has. And as you can see, you also have a keyless entry. If you have the key in your pocket, you just open it up and it unlocks the car automatically and you can also hit the black button on top to lock it when you want to walk away. Very comfortable sporty seats. The side bolstering is very supportive. Keeps you snug, keeps you snug in here. Doesn't let you slide around anywhere like the older generations did. We've got a very nice steering wheel right here with notches right here on 10 and 2 for ultra grip and a nice leather feel to it. You've got cool seats, wonderful, I love it. And uh, these nice race style pedals down here with the grips, that's also good for especially when it's wet outside. I love that sound, man. It's also equipped with the eight-speed automatic, not the manual transmission, which is a big, you know, I kind of wanted to opt for the six-speed manual, but this is all that I could get for right now to do a review on. But the eight-speed is very fast, it shifts seamlessly, and it sounds great when you downshift. It gives you nice little pops. Now, coming down to the infotainment system, this car you can do so much with it. Right now, I have my Apple CarPlay connected. But just to give you an idea of what you can do, and I'm sure you've seen this before, go into the performance pages, you can change everything. You can change the engine and transmission mode from normal to sport, change the paddle shifters on, like for instance, you click on that and you can change everything. You can change the engine and transmission settings from normal to sport, the paddle shifters from on to off. You can also change the traction control system from being normal to sport, which basically turns it off and gives you a little bit more, you know, play. <laughs> you can change the steering feel. You can go from comfort to normal to sport. I personally like to drive in sport because it gives you a stiffer feel on the steering wheel, makes you feel a little bit more secure. Down here, you see the push button start right there. And as you can see down here, the first thing I know you guys notice is the sport and the super track pack button. The sport button, when you push it,
automatically turns traction control off, puts you in sport mode, and you can use the paddle shifters, and it keeps the revs a little bit higher for going through corners. Now, when you push the super track pack button, you basically come back to this page here, and you can, you know, do a couple of little, you can do some changes to the performance. You can really, you can really um, set this thing up to cater to what you really want to do. Another cool feature is the launch control. I want to touch on that a little bit. You push that. As you can see, you can set where you want your RPMs to hold for your launch control. For instance, if I wanted to activate launch control now, I would hit activate launch control, and then it's active, and it's set at 1500 RPM. So basically what I would do is, you put your foot on the brake, your foot on the gas, and you floor it until you're ready to take off. Now we're gonna pop the hood, and I'll show you what this beast looks like. Looking at this beautiful shaker, you can see it shake a tiny bit if you pay attention, but it's basically like a Ram Air, like back in the day with the six packs and all that type of stuff. Sucks in the air, takes into the air intake right there, and just listen to this thing purr, so nasty, and I love this car. Beautiful, nice and clean. Owner takes really good care of this car. Even though it's still pretty much brand new, it's in really good condition. As you can see, powered by SRT. For those of you who don't want to believe that this is the SRT motor, 6.4 liters of pure insanity. Like I said, 485 horsepower and 475 pound-feet of torque. Craziness, zero to 60 in about four and a half seconds. And you will, with the top speed of right around 155, 160 miles per hour because of the top speed limiter. Really nice shaker sticker right there. Like I was saying, I love the styling of this car. Look at the black stripes going on the hood. Well, actually, it's dark gray stripes. It comes from the shaker hood all the way up to the top of the roof. Nice little pinstripes going back all the way to the trunk and connected to the black spoiler. So beautiful, I love this car. It looks so mean. It's the only true muscle car left that you can buy today, brand new from the dealer. Coming to the back. Now I want to talk about this key fob. Dodge gives you a nice little size key fob, nice feel to it, nothing too fancy, nothing too cheap. But what you need to realize is this does not have the convenience package because you can tell that it does not have the automatic push button start feature on this, on this key fob. You have the regular unlock and lock and the trunk and the panic button, but no push button start. You have the regular push button start inside of the vehicle. Now let me show you the trunk space so you can see just how practical this car is. Pretty spacious trunk, and then you're looking at my work shoes and my basketball because I never know when I gotta get down on the court. But a pretty spacious trunk. This is honestly one of the biggest cargo spaces of a two-door coupe that you can buy. The Challengers have always known to be big, but this is massive. I mean, you can fit suitcases, golf clubs, dog stuff, anything you need to go on a long road trip, you can fit right back here. And if anything you can't fit in here, in the back seat. I'm in the Dodge Challenger Scat Pack, and the first thing you notice when you're inside this car is just how big it is. I mean, it is massive. You honestly feel like you're driving a small house on the road. I mean, it takes up so much space in the lane, and most of the time, you're very paranoid about if you're actually in the lane you're supposed to be in. So I'm constantly looking around and checking to see if I'm in the lane. But um, yeah, she's a big girl, um, but she's not too big, I'll give her that. Um, another thing you notice, right off the bat driving this car is the huge shaker hood. I mean, it takes up, well, I'm shorter, so it takes up just a little bit of my, you know, view, but I mean, it looks so badass sitting there just shaking. I guess that's why they call it shaker, <laughs> but it sits there just shaking. And speaking of shaking, by the way, this car, it shakes, actually shakes side to side while you're sitting in it. I mean, that just, it makes you feel like you're in one of those old school muscle cars, like the old school Dodge Challenger. Now, although this car is very big and very wide as well as long, it's not that hard to maneuver um, in and out of traffic. I mean, it's not like a, um, I mean, it's not like you're driving a pickup truck or anything like that, but it is a big girl. But like I said, it's very easy to maneuver in and out of traffic and the steering wheel is very tight. It's not loose like the um, luxury cars you can have like, um, 
like a Toyota or a Lexus, I guess you would say the steering would be a little bit looser. So I guess that's a luxury feel. But I love the sporty feel of this steering wheel. It's nice and stiff, very responsive going around turns and it's been raining all day so the grounds today are very wet just driving normally it feels pretty planted for a car that weighs over 4,000 pounds now yeah yeah see there's there's still a little bit of body roll going around a turn but it's not too much body roll it's not like it was you know back in 2009 2010 when the Dodge Challenger was basically like a boat. I believe that's the generation that gave it its you know, nickname and how people always call them boats. I believe that's the generation that did it because they were just so big and wide and they weren't that fast back then unless you had the SRT8, but they were just so big and massive and just took up so much space. And when you go around a curve, you can just feel the entire car just you know shifting the weight to one side. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the visibility out of this car. Looking around this car, there's not a big blind spot in this car that makes you go, oh my God, it's horrible. Um, with the car being a much bigger car, you have to take on a much larger responsibility of, you know, make sure you're looking around your car when you're switching lanes because this car is much longer and much wider than most cars. So there might be a car sneaking up on your side that you can't see and you, you know, might have a little accident. But, um, oh man, listen to that sound. But, um, so this car has pretty good visibility for its size. Another thing that cannot go unnoticed in this car is, of course, the engine note or exhaust note. It just sounds so deep and angry, and I mean, listen to this. It's crazy. This, honestly, might be the best sounding V8 I have heard. Uh, of course, with the, you know, with the newer model cars coming out, like 2015 and, and better. Uh, well, I guess I could say the best naturally aspirated sounding V8 I've heard so far. Now let's talk a little bit about ride quality with this car. It is actually surprisingly comfortable. I went over a couple of big bumps and potholes known in the uh, known over here in the Tampa Bay area, and it handled them pretty well. It didn't give a big jolt in my back. I'm pretty sure that this car is meant to be, you know, driven every day and taking on long road trips. That's why it's so spacious. You get a really spacious back seat. You know, the seats are very comfortable. They're not too small. They're not too big. They hug you just right. The side upholstery is very, very supportive. Um, not that you're going to go taking this car to the track or anything like that, going around corners at 1.03 Gs or anything like that. But um, it's supporting you for whatever you want to do. But yeah, this car soaks up the bumps better than most cars out today. Being that this is a muscle car, you would expect the ride quality to suck. But it doesn't. It's actually better than my older Lexus, surprisingly. Well, not surprisingly, this is a 2017 vehicle, and my car is from 2004, so my daily driver, you know, it's, it's pretty old, so of course it's not going to have the smoothest ride anymore like it used to back in the day. But this car rides very smooth. Just riding on the interstate, I feel like this is a great car to take a long trip with because it's just, you know, the ride, like I said about the ride quality, it's so smooth, it just kind of glides. And with it being so big, it just gives you this feeling of security with it being this big and this smooth, it gives you, it feels like a big secure car. But it also has 485 horsepower and 475 pound-feet torque to get you wherever you want to go in a hurry. I mean, like, if you listen to it, Oh man, <laughs> oh my God. Oh man, this thing is so sick. This thing sounds so good. Oh my God. I think I'm slowly, slowly falling in love with this car. I never was a huge fan of Challengers, but when the 2015 model year came out, this body style, I already liked the new body style, but when I saw the Scat Pack and the Shaker with it, oh my God, I was sold. This car is very unique in the styling. It's one of the only cars on sale today that still appears to be a muscle car and also sounds like a muscle car and goes like a muscle car. I mean, just listen to this. <laughs> this car is ridiculous. It is insane to drive. Oh my gosh, it's just, it is a blast. If you've never driven a Scat Pack before, get yourself out there and go on a test drive. If you're thinking about buying one, pull the trigger, or at least go on a test drive to see how you like it. I guarantee if you're a person who likes fast cars and convenience, this is the perfect car for you. Now, one thing I want to point out about this car, there's not a lot of drone coming from the exhaust on the highway. I'm here cruising at about 65 miles per hour, and 
yeah, you can hear the exhaust, but it's not that loud, obnoxious, you know, drone sound that we're used to hearing, especially with aftermarket exhaust. Uh, ones that don't have the um, the newer technology to stop the drone, but um, this exhaust is it's pretty livable. I can live with this each every day, and um, not really have a problem with it. Especially me because I'm a car guy and I love the sound of the exhaust. But I would immediately put a louder exhaust on it and probably have it in a you know straight pipe delete the muffler. It's very livable. It's not too much. It's not too in your face. But once you put your foot down, you can make it sound as, as gnarly as you want it to. Oh yeah, the feel for the road is really good. It feels pretty planted. You know, for a car that weighs over 4,000 pounds, it feels really, really planted to the ground. And I know that the Scat Pack is just a tad bit lighter than the Hellcat and the SRTs, but um, it still feels just as heavy as any other Challenger, you know, especially with the big 6.4 liter V8 under the hood up there, right underneath that shaker hood shaking away. <laughs> I love that thing. I love that thing. This car has the type of exhaust note that you never get tired of. I mean, never, ever get tired of. This is the type of exhaust note that makes you floor this car at least four times when you're driving to work. <laughs> I mean, this car is just begging you for more throttle, begging for more throttle. It's ridiculous. And for it to be naturally aspirated and to sound this good, oh, it's just that much of a treat. I mean, listen to that. And you know what I just noticed? I just noticed this. When you get on the gas a little bit, you can hear a little whistle coming from the shaker. It almost sounds similar to a supercharger wine. And I know it's not a supercharger wine. This car is the naturally aspirated 6.4 liter Hemi, not the uh, supercharged 6.2 liter. But man, does it sound so good. <laughs> I can't get over the way it sounds. Oh man. Now one of the really cool features I love about this car is the paddle shifter feature. You have these paddle shifters here and you can upshift or downshift and you know, it just helps you get a better feel for the car. You really want to feel like you're in control of the car. With it being an automatic transmission, some people like to have that option of being able to, you know, switch the gears at their own pace or be with, be in whatever gear they desire to be in. So I really like it. So to get in it really quick, press the support button. I mean, when you downshift it, it just sounds ridiculous. Here we go. I'm going to downshift it again so that you can hear that pretty exhaust note. Listen to this. That is ridiculous. This car sounds so good. It's crazy. And it, like I said, it just begs for more and more throttle and it begs you to get that gas. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> and it's very responsive. The time from your click to the time where it downshifts or upshifts is literally lightning fast. I mean, you would think that this is a dual clutch. And I'm not sure exactly what type of automatic transmission this is, but um, it shifts really, really quick. I would enjoy driving this on the track if this car was track savvy, I guess you could say. And in the screen right here, it shows you what gear you're in right now. Let's see, I'll just shift it down to one. Yeah, so it shows you what gear you're in. Another demonstration of the paddle shifters. We're in first right now. Third. Fourth. Oh my god. This car sounds ridiculous. It sounds like a dragon. <laughs> sounds like a dragon. I do think when you hit, when you put it in sport mode, the exhaust gets a little louder. I feel like it does. I'm not sure. Someone comment down below, let me know if I'm right or wrong, but if it does, I wouldn't be surprised because it sounds that much crazier. Listen to this. Turn traction control back on. This car is just a blast to drive, man. I can't get over how fun this is. <laughs> oh my God. This thing sounds insane that's ridiculous did you guys hear that just wish that the roads were dry dry enough so that we could really have some fun and really bring this car out for all the power that it has but we're just so limited right now to what we can do but i'm not complaining i'm still having lots and lots of fun this challenger also has some really great brakes it's equipped with brembo brake calipers on here which gives it great stopping power i mean i'm not going to stomp with the brakes right now but it has really great feel for the brakes you don't really get much brake fade and the brake feel, the brake pedal is nice and firm. It's not that soft, mushy type feel that I don't really like that comes from some luxury vehicles. It's like a mushy feel that gives you too much play in it. It's like it 
gives you way too much leeway into how much pressure you have to apply to really get the brakes to bite. These brakes bite and they bite hard. I mean, these Brembo's can stop this car in the blink of an eye and it's exactly what you need when you have 485 horsepower right under your right foot to use whenever you choose to. I believe this car also has the cylinder deactivation technology, which is really good if you want to save some, you know, if you want to save some gas, you want to get a little bit better gas mileage. I, I don't really like it because when you're cruising at a low speed at a low RPM, it changes into this exhaust note that's really, it's like a little shuddery noise, like uh, almost like it's sputtering or misfiring, and I don't really like that noise, even though I know it's not really misfiring, I just don't like the way it sounds. But I'm pretty sure that's the uh, cylinder deactivation doing that. But when you, you know, drive normal, put some pressure on the gas, you get that exhaust note back. But if you're driving at a normal, you know, like a grandma speed, it'll deactivate some of those cylinders, probably turn it into a four cylinder. Gosh, that is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, that is crazy. 